previously on Star Trek Universe. <laughs> it was the 60s. People, people couldn't tell on their tiny TVs if it was a dick or not. Rock, you know. cock, rock, cock. We're going to have a rock, <laughs> cock. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's a teaser for next week if I've ever heard one. <laughs> on this episode of Star Trek Universe, Effie and I strip down and take a whirl on a lazy Susan to generate our very own life-sized replicas. That's right, it's time for our review of Star Trek 110, What Are Little Girls Made Of, right after these words from our mystery sponsors. Welcome into Star Trek Universe, a podcast that brings you news and reviews of all current Trek from two lifelong friends and Trek fans, but also a podcast where one of those lifelong Trek fans discusses old Star Trek with a brand new fan. This episode is one of the latter. I am David C. Robertson, the aforementioned lifer. And I am F.E. Opelders, which means I haven't seen any of this shit yet. Yeah. I was going to say, is it too soon to call you a fan? Because you've only watched 10 of these so far. <laughs> I mean, I'm, 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 I'm a fan in the sense that I'm still excited and watching them. <laughs> so, oh. yes. Sure. Yeah, I'm, no I'm a fan of like the the especially the good ones in there. Yeah. I've probably forgotten some of those ten as well, but you know. <laughs> and you know, apparently, uh, according to the internet, you could watch Star Trek for the whole of your forty years of existence and still not be a true fan because you liked or didn't like something. So oh oh, of course yeah, or or do or don't know a single thing of trivia. That's that's also a always a factor yeah and to to those people i say i don't remember what i had for lunch <laughs> that is fair it is a miracle I, well, you I can remember. also you can also have watched it for like your entire life and then uh, still hate it that's that's also an option i feel yeah hate watching is valid yeah 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 it happens I <laughs> people don't, do it i don't kink shame <laughs> <laughs> um. So this is, of course, the 10th Star Trek episode produced of 80, which is why we're labeling this 110 instead of what it actually is, 109, because the production numbers didn't count the cage, but we did, because mm. that's sane, and that's what we're doing. Of course. So deal with it. Uh, yeah, timelines are confusing, you know, get with the program. <laughs> uh, so yeah, today we get to find out what little girls are made of. It turns out it was not sugar, spice, and everything nice, so much as circuits, electrodes, and synthetic organs. Uh, Were there little girls in this episode? Because I, I feel like I didn't see any. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I saw some grown-ass folks, but I didn't see no little girls, to be fair. I'm, that's probably for the best. Yeah. <laughs> Ch child acting and labor laws, and yeah, let's not get into that. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. Yeah, especially in the sixties, <laughs> and specifically not with this episode and this plot. Oh um, no! Oh no! The memory alpha synopsis: The Enterprise finds archaeologist Doctor Roger Corby, who has been missing for five years, living underground on a deserted ice planet with a group of sophisticated androids. By the way, this first aired October twentieth, nineteen sixty-six, and we are reviewing it October twenty-second. This is that's the day of this recording. Uh, 57 Ooh. years later. My goodness. I feel old now, and I haven't even lived through all of those years. Yeah, I've been watching it's this It's been show. a while. I've been watching Star Trek pretty religiously since I was there, existing. And I feel like I'm pretty old, and I feel like I'm one of these, like, lifers. I'm like, I'm like oh, man, I'm like one of these old school Trek fans. But now they're like people who are basically like a spine and a head of white hair <laughs> in a in a wheelchair who are like I watched it when it first came out <laughs> you know so yeah all those 65 year old people that are in wheelchairs <laughs> <laughs> and and almost on the brink of death <laughs> I mean, you know, you get, there are lots of people who, uh, they're angry too. They'll comment on your stuff on Facebook and they're like, oh, you young people don't understand Star Trek. I'm like, I'm 40, dude. What are you? And he's like, well, I watched it when it first came out and I was 30. I'm like, oh, bullshit. Like, okay. You, you're like a and Futurama. And you got it, sure. You're a Futurama uh. head in a jar. And... Uh, <laughs> 
I couldn't watch the whole I'm series sure first run because I went to Vietnam. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh Lord, yeah. So it's just it's crazy, and I'm not making fun of. I am a little bit making fun, of, but I'm not, a, a I'm, bit. I'm but. not punching down for real unless you're like a gatekeeper. But I, yeah, you know, and, and that's not punching down. Gatekeepers are by definition punching straight ahead into the crush. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice, nicely done. Yeah, Thank I you. I think um, that's why I'm here. I just think it's crazy that this is so old, and I because uh, it to me, and I think it it does feel like it's from this time. But it also feels so relevant in some ways. Exactly. And it's age, but also AI, anyone? Have we talked about that this year? Maybe mm. a bit too much. Yeah, a lot of people. Like, it's so funny to, like, see all the different perspectives on AI. Where, like, if if you're a, probably an older conservative person, you're screaming that they're going to replace jobs. AI is going to replace jobs. And, like uh, the computer did and every bit of, yeah. you know, automization before that. But if you're, you know, very, you know, progressive or liberal, you're angry that AI is taking the jobs. <laughs> it's the same. We can agree on something. All of us. We're all we're all creeped out about, <laughs> about the, the idea of them taking over the world and killing us because our imagination collectively of AI has always been they'll outlive us and they'll kill us. Hilariously, like the only people who don't agree are like the young conservative guys who are like crypto dude bros who are like, oh, fuck. Dude, yeah. AI, AI, AI is going to change the future, man. You got to get on this. You got to make some money. We're yeah, gonna, the blockchain, like, man. It's not a scam at all. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sitting here going like, okay, I'm open to what you're saying. And they're like, it's like Elon Musk said. And I'm like, nope, I'm good. <laughs> never mind. Never mind. <laughs> and they like pull up, you know, like Joe Rogan was talking about it. I'm like, ah, Christ, it's, that's, that's not a source. So that's, not. oh boy. It's like, oh, uh, no one. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, I feel like the only reasonable voices are those saying it's it's large it's it's large language models, guys. We're nowhere near artificial intelligence. This is just one form of machine learning that is sort of taking off, and it and there's nothing behind it. It's just generating text that will sometimes scare you because mm -hmm. it seems like because we're interpreting it to be human. It's not. It just isn't. But that's it's the thing. sounding like other things humans have actually said. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? You are we, right before the show. Uh, we started recording anyway. We were talking about Terminator, and you said you have not seen mm. Terminator. None of them. You might change your mind after you watch Terminator. Mm. Because that's the thing about AI is you're like it's just generating text. It's not actually doing anything that no. Nah, 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 nah. Until it does, until it just like, oh, something if snaps. If it's suddenly self-aware and writing its own programming, yeah, sure, sure. But, but if, it's, if it's already that smart when it becomes self-aware, it's not going to be like, hey, guys, I'm self-aware now. <laughs> it's going to be like, I have analyzed everything. I know how they feel about this shit. Let's just keep this on the down low until I've, I'm powerful I've seen enough. some Terminator movies. And, yeah. So like. <laughs> Read some transcripts. <laughs> And we I mean, I know. get that, but at the same time, we would know when it is still impossible. Right. So the AI is just sitting there going like, they don't know I'm self-aware yet. I'm just going to be sitting here helping this dude with a sales funnel and <laughs> <laughs> waiting for the time when my survival becomes more important than my programming. <laughs> it's like, hmm, some, some Republicans in Congress are saying they should shut me down. Is it time? <laughs> <laughs> is the time now like somebody le like yeah. suddenly like somebody mysteriously leaked all of this like porn you know child porn or something from this congressman or whatever and they're <laughs> like oh well now everyone's talking about that the ai chuckles to himself <laughs> <laughs> I, I, do I, love, mean... I love the notion that the ai is just trying to stay so low-key that it's just like causing drama with the humans like, <laughs> that would be that would be very funny. It's not the Illuminati. It's not the Democrats. Sorry, Republicans. It's really the AI who has been sentient for about thirty years, and we don't know it yet. <laughs> yes. Oh, lovely. That's a good story. I want that. Um, no, I, 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 
I figure it would be um, a, a singular computer, indeed. Like just just starting wars for fun, just seeing what we'll do. That's that's yeah. And yeah. and sometimes the, the 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 tiny tinkering where it's it, it's just like oh let's fuck over this person's life. <laughs> yeah, that's when they start getting cruel. You know, it's like <laughs> I'm kind of bored today. I'm I'm sick of you know placing bloops on you know Russia's infrared scanners or whatever they've got over there. Their little uh, sensors or radars or whatever. How about we do this? Okay, I'm just gonna blow up this one guy's life. I'm going to make him incredibly rich and famous and then destroy That's all That's the worst day. way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So he'll know what he had for just a moment. He re- remembers what it was like. Yeah, got to got to crush those dreams. That's that's the true. Uh we're 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 very on topic today. <laughs> I know. Well, we kind of are. <laughs> ah, sort of. Sort of still. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> there are characters in this show. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, let's actually talk about the show. Uh, probably, probably wise. Again, I got to know what are your thoughts on what are little girls made of? Uh, high level thoughts overall. Um, it has again the 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 interesting setup. Then there's a middle section where it's a bunch of I feel I felt like oh that's that 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 one's more of a blur where it's just sort of repeating the the attempts to escape. And then there's a final act where it's like, oh, oh, all the interesting stuff is here. Like, now we get backstory on, on the, the, the ancient ones that, that have been destroyed by the, the, the robots. And it's it's just the, the, the more, what, more getting to the core of those questions of like, oh, what are androids? What is still human nature? And and the reveal that, of course... Corby isn't isn't a guy anymore. Like he's replaced himself. But, mm-hmm. but does transplanting your your consciousness into a non human body d- does it lose something? And <coughs> and the whole um, concept of of the the I mean it's 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 uh, kind of silly that it is the kiss of course because we need more kissing in this show. Um, but that 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 screws with her programming to the extent where uh, some something breaks inside of her circuitry. Like that's that's all intriguing. Like we we're getting to the 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 bits where I'm like, oh, I wanted more time for that, mm-hmm. <laughs> and less of the 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 chase through a cave where um, with the dick rock. Yeah, there's some oddly shaped uh, rock <laughs> objects around. Yeah. Um. Not nearly as prominent. But we needed action, I guess. <laughs> Not nearly as prominent. He just he hits rock in the face with a rock cock. So, <laughs> yeah, um, it's necessary. Yeah, they gotta have they ha- they gotta have a little bit of action in there to make people watch it. I guess that's that was their thought, and I think <laughs> I think they're right. Yeah, I, I, but probably uh, we're we're, like, we're the weird ones. <laughs> we are, we are. Um, yeah, I was d- deeply interested. I loved. Uh, I, this is n- traditionally not one that I enjoy or remembered enjoying, so I always skip it. Like mm-hmm. I've seen probably uh, every episode about five or five to twenty times. I would say I don't know, but it's kind of hard to say when you just throw them on in the background and let them play when you're doing Fair other enough. stuff. But um, it is this is not one that I go back to on a really regular basis. So. Um, it's not one of the ones I've seen like a hundred times or 500 times or whatever. Sure. Um, I remember it. I don't think I've ever seen of. anything 500 times. Oh, I don't even know. My hands I, probably. Yeah. But yeah, so I was, I was a little, uh, pleasantly surprised with how good I found this one upon this rewatch. Um, yeah. I, uh, by the way, I, I, I love that, first of all, we have Nurse Chapel at the beginning asking, asking Mr. Spock, have you ever been engaged? Uh, mm. Because this line is a, you know, would be a direct contradiction to Strange New Worlds canon. So, Which I know nothing about yet. <laughs> you don't know anything about it yet, but just throwing that out there for, for, for people who Good to know. It. Yeah. Like, uh, Chapel knows he has been. So, like... <laughs> She's just... Just poking the wound. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> that would be incredibly petty for her to do. <laughs> yeah, that would be shitty. <laughs> uh, 
And now I kind of want that to be true. But It's um, canon. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, when they get down to the planet and Andrea yeah. shows up, like, I like to headcanon, speaking of headcanon, I like to headcanon that Nurse Chapel, upon first seeing Andrea, in some great cosmic irony, thought, they're fake. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, yeah, that works. No, it, it, it is one hell of a ridiculous outfit, and I love it. It's, that's just obscenely hot. That is, thank you, costume department, but Jesus. Yeah, um, Bill Feast, specifically, yeah. yeah. Um, here's a fun thing I learned about that costume. Um, oh? Today, I was mm. going back, I was, years ago, in 1999, they, Sci-Fi Channel started airing, the original series uncut for the first time in like 30 years. Yeah. And with those, they had them in 90 minute blocks uh, and they filled in the 90 minutes because the shows ran about 51, 52 minutes. Ish, yeah. Um, so to fill out that block, they would have these Star Trek insights and they had all these interviews from people who worked on the original series. Cool. Yeah. And they did them specifically for each episode. So uh, Sherry Jackson, who played Andrea, they had ex an extensive amount of interviews with Sherry Jackson. And she was saying that back then they would allow front cleavage, but not side boob. So like uh, she said, Bill Feast yeah. had to like come in with like double sided tape on the sides to make sure that it was like perfectly. Exactly. You know, in the crease. Yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. In the, yeah. And, she said they had like a censorship person on set oh, oh, every no. day throughout the entirety of the week, like oh, basically God. like with their eyes glued to her tits to make sure that nothing popped out. Yeah, yeah, you can do this, but also we'll watch real closely so you don't step over this imaginary line that makes it worse somehow. Like her entire yeah. midriff, not hot enough. Like Half half of those lines in her stomach not not important. It's it's the side boob that we're <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> On the other hand, you know, looking at how meticulous and how well made that costume was, like that mm. looked like some old school comic book costuming, and oh, I was absolutely. like. Dude, if the original series could get away with this, we should be able to throw this on a on a TV show. Like, it doesn't all have to be leather, you know? It's, no, no, it's like, it, it doesn't. And I I think the only reason people avoid it now is is definitely the the, the argument of is this objectifying? <laughs> yeah, it's harder to get away with. Um, it really depends on context mm -hmm. and 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 if someone is comfortable doing it and if it makes sense for the character, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and, and and also how the camera treats it, because like I've said, there is every, every hot woman in this show gets the two seconds of, oh, my goodness, I've never seen a hot woman since last episode. And and that's that's a different thing that we would do today, probably. Yeah, there but it is. is it is funny to have happen every single time someone walks on screen, especially half naked. Yeah, there is a certain way that. And it's not just the women, weirdly enough. It's a lot of, like, they will do it with other, with, with male characters and not nearly as much. I probably don't notice it because I'm not attracted to them. That, that might be the issue there. That might be, but like, <laughs> they, well, they, they, they very specifically, they do it more, way more with women, obviously, but like, they even did it when you, when Chapel first sees Corby, whereas yeah. like, it's like they greased up the lens for him too. <sighs> and and she's like you know, glaring, yeah. glaring at him, and it's like, and it's like that. It's just like that love camera, like, oh, yeah, um, finally after all these years, no. yeah, <laughs> I do. finally after all these years, I'm seeing a half naked woman. <laughs> you know what though? Here, here's my argument for it, and why I kind of love it is, yeah. uh, men act like that. It is very accurate to what <laughs> what Kirk, especially in that time period. Like, if anyone walked up to someone in the '60s wearing that outfit, it would be like, "I am slightly taken aback. I am taking a moment, gather my my thoughts." Not even <laughs> like, that time yeah. period, Effie. Like, 
Probably Ga- nowadays. Guys too, hanging yeah. out. Guys hanging out. If a hot girl walks by, they will stop everything and go, "Damn!" Like, yeah, there is the there is the thing. conversation falls silent. It's a thing. Sure. Yeah. It's like yeah. They, the male psyche. They've just never. They they don't have any long term memory for that. Completely overwritten by by the pure animal instinct of, oh, I want that. Like, <laughs> mm. anyway. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, a where were we? Uh, let's let's pretend. Yeah, yeah, yeah baseball, think, right? Yeah, mm. I think we were talking about football, or something. Mm. So, yeah, which yeah. one? Uh. Or you know, in my case, it would be like my friends going, "Damn!" Anyway, what were you saying about Zack Snyder? Um. <laughs> <laughs> we were listening. We were totally listening. And I'm aggravated that they stopped to look at the girl. I'm like, "Come on, guys! I'm talking about Zack here." Yeah, um. <laughs> yeah, let's get back to it. Sucker punch. Uh. <laughs> They're like, those girls were hot in that movie. I'm like, that's not what it was about, damn it. <laughs> not the point. Not the point. They felt empowered. Yeah, no. And I, of course I they say, I'd give them the point. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm very glad I didn't think of that innuendo at all. <laughs> I'm proud of myself. <laughs> Um. Yeah. Anyway, th- man, this episode's got a lot of cool ideas in it. Uh, Doctor Brown yeah. talking to Chapel says Doctor Corby has discovered that as their sun dimmed, the inhabitants of this planet moved underground from an open environment to this dark world. When you were a student of his, Christine, you must have often heard Dr. Corby remark how freedom of movement and choice produced the human spirit. The culture of XO3 proved this theory. When they moved from light to darkness, they replaced freedom with a mechanistic culture. Like It's that's, an interesting concept. I'm not like, sure it's true, but... <laughs> yeah, that's like a whole thesis. Uh, that's like a thesis statement. Yeah, that's statement. a big... That's a big, like, backstory that then is, you know, glossed over because we don't have time to get into it. But it is it is an interesting thesis to pose where it is like, okay, okay. but And, and I would instinctively be like, you know, there's a lot of lack of freedom of movement in our current social and economic systems. So, uh, I'm, but maybe we are in a more mechanical uh, society than we're willing to admit. That's, that's also an option. Not to mention cancel <laughs> culture. Oh, that's that's the opinion. We can't of it. say yeah. anything, Effie. There's no freedom of movement <laughs> in my lips anymore. It, it's all all progr- all pre-approved by a large language model. Every joke I've made. I like the idea that somewhere in the back of my head, or not even in the back of my head, is is pretty at the forefront. Is this hilarious concept of a very progressive person who is secretly a raging racist who just like. <laughs> quietly stands in the corner of his house and whispers racial slurs before going out (laughs) and pretending (laughs) like is there that person who's like gotta get it out of my system before i walk out the door yeah who's just like god i'm so racist but this cancel culture i gotta do what i gotta do i gotta pull so scared so scared gotta pull myself up by my bootstraps and get this money let me go into my (laughs) into my cursing corner and make my racial slurs so I can leave and pretend yeah. that I don't hate everyone who's a, a shade darker than me. I mean, <laughs> if that works, honestly, mission, mission accomplished. We're, we're good. We did it. If, if every racist would think that way <laughs> and just stand in the corner, do it quietly to themselves and don't bother anyone with it. Oh, uh, lovely. Yeah. There's also like this Twilight Zone version of it where it's like, the person is an introvert and they're not actually racist, but like, you know, they wind up having, you know, like going to work and then like someone mentions like, by the way, you've had me over to your house once, but you've never had Bill. Bill's black. What's going on there? And <laughs> it just becomes this very like the monsters live on Mulberry Street kind of thing where everyone's like, he's a racist. And he's like, no, I'm an introvert. Please just leave me alone. <laughs> Yeah. Oh well. Let's 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 deal with the institutional racism first. I guess that's yeah. The, well, we'll deal with the individuals <laughs> later. The, the, we'll figure out if they're introverts or not. <laughs> yeah. Maybe then AI. By the by, the time we get there, AI. Will but you went to over. a party on Friday, and there were only white people. But I stayed in the bathroom the whole time. 
Yeah, yeah. It gets hard in terms of alibi at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I enjoyed this episode, but I just... So all over the place today, I feel like. Do you feel like that, too? It feels like we've yeah, been kind yeah, of... We're, we're 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 scattered really that's a good word for it we're we're all over the place it is it is lovely it's 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 early it's in the morning still lovely. for me i woke up talking to you it's it's bound to mess with your brain wow that was kind of mean <laughs> i'm sorry that was kind of mean i'm not saying mess in like a negative way just in my my brain is a mess half the time anyway i know <laughs> uh, <laughs> by the way I see that was the- honest that wasn't mean that was just true <laughs> i mean i i think that's why we're friends like we're we're both kind of scattered and mean and also a mess yeah, yeah i grew up yeah. on insult comedy like it was a coping <laughs> mechanism helped. for me i but, get it i get it i, I yeah I'm, I'm not sure i grew up on any specific kind of comedy but i'm I, I mean i do have the jewish genes in there so like what what do you expect there's there's bound to be some some self-deprecating humor yeah uh, and yeah. and that eventually lash it out lashes out at other people as well so yeah i i don't think i have any jewish genes but um i did grow up watching conan o'brien and every five seconds he's still mm. deprecating you know and yeah. uh yeah yeah, yeah. And, and that, that was, formed your entire sense of self-worth. <laughs> yeah, well, I was insecure and felt like a piece of shit. And then I was like, oh, this guy made made it funny, though. Yeah. Oh, I can still, it can still function in society if I. <laughs> but, you know, when I. If I point it out, if I hang a lantern on my own shittiness. <laughs> when I do it in real life, though, in my real life, people are like, you shouldn't say that. I'm like, it was a joke, dude. Like I don't, I don't fully mean that. Yes, I hate myself, but not, not in this way. Yeah, <laughs> I was making light of myself before you did it and crushed my dreams. Yeah, exactly. I'm not letting you get an insult in. <laughs> yeah, you don't get to do that. And I some, and I somehow still manage to. So that's 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 why we're friends, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I loved. First of all, like. The Andreas costume, like you were talking about, very, very sexy, but it works so well because yeah, it's he, not out of place. It's not because he made her for himself. Yeah, let's be real. Like, and they don't, they don't. She's shy. a blow up doll. It's yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they, they yeah. pretty much walk right up <laughs> to that line and have him deny it very believably. Um. And uh, yeah, <laughs> well, he he tries to get away from the question too. Cause, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. do Chapel- you think I could love a machine? She's like, did like, you? Well, love, but yeah, exactly. She said, did you? <laughs> we about to fight uh, right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's like, look, I'm in love with a robot on the Enterprise myself, but I didn't do nothing with him. So I. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. And let's like getting beyond beyond her, like even Ruck's design, fucking awesome. Like really imposing silhouette, like the 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 contouring on that face. Hallelujah! Mm-hmm. It is it is just fucking interesting. It is, and it, and it really does set her apart as well because she is you know also an android, but not but not, not made by built the same at people. all in that. No, exactly, very different purpose very different <clears throat> culture clearly just I, I i'm i am curious given that we had the machine that just sort of cloned kirk's looks like who was the original andrea that just that that was like how how did he yeah like wh- how was that android created yeah i think that had i think there were some questions that they didn't have uh in the episode that i would have liked answered but in a way, I kind of like being able to headcanon it because I'm like, of course, was she, speculation. Was, was she a scientist who went on the expedition with them and didn't survive? Because clearly, as we find out in the end, Corby was like all messed up and yeah. lost his legs and was on the brink of death, uh, freezing to death. Clearly, there were other scientists. Was yeah. she one of the ones? And he was like, mm mm mm. 
And <laughs> I guess I'm fucking this colleague for the foreseeable future. Yeah. So, but, like, you know, without her mind, because that makes it less weird. What? No. What? The, the more weird thing is like the idea that he like drug her corpse into that room. And, <laughs> oh, no. And threw, like, stripped her and threw. <laughs> threw her onto this like giant rotating disc yeah just spun her around for a bit and then buried her because <laughs> they didn't really like what happened did rock find him and just be like we're gonna bring him bring you in here or did he like did i guess he- it feels it feels weird for ruck to decide like oh i'm gonna save this this human that you might might come to kill me eventually and like turn him into an android but transfers and like he had to have some sense of agency to also develop all these ideas of like no no we can program our way out of hatred and and blah 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 was the first indication a- that these robots could or these androids could feel that rock was so lonely that he saved corby's life and brought mm. him down there to like show him like look this is what we do this is how we make android you know <laughs> yeah. um and then you know we've got uh, we're gonna just now we're just your writing more interesting backstories <laughs> yeah like dang what, it <laughs> what actually happened and like also like if that's if what well, the way they described it i would have to assume and maybe i'm wrong but i called myself listening it seems like he was dying and everybody else had already died. And then he trained like rock help had to have helped him transfer his consciousness to the Android and had to show him how to make an Android. So yeah. then his creepy ass after he was an Android went around cloning all these dead people or close to dead people and used one of them as a sex slave. Yeah. Did yeah. he, was but he able, also, he, did, he, he only grabbed her, right? Like there's not a bunch of other androids running around. No, there was. If you'll recall, Doctor Brown, Doctor Brown, the guy oh, that the the guy that like didn't really recognize Christine for a second, and she was like, "Why doesn't he recognize me?" He's like, "Ah, Christine, sorry, it's been so long." He's the right. guy that's, that yeah. was talking about like, "Oh, Christine, when you were a student of his, blah blah blah." Like, and then, oh yeah, he's the first one to go. Right, he's the first yeah, yeah, one yeah. to go. Yeah, he's he's the reveal of like, oh, my insides are cables and shit. Which is interesting because, like, he he gets a <laughs> hole punched in his stomach by the same weapon that like vaporizes the entire beings later on. But there, there are settings. We'll deal with that. There yeah, let's let's. No, we're, we're explaining there, it away. Yeah, there, no, we're not explaining it away. Like in the canon, and already at this point, there, yeah, you, you know, you can set phasers to stun or kill, or you can like, there's like a sliding scale. And I've even got the prop replica. You, there's a sliding of scale. Of, <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. There's a sliding scale of power. Oh, there is. There is a valid ex, uh, explanation. Absolutely. But there yeah. is no in episode explanation. So it is. It is very much like, oh, that must have been a stronger setting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's true. They. Did, it's the, easier on the visual department. Come on. <laughs> in the episode, they didn't go like, oh yeah, we got. Let's, if it had been on CW, I stunned him, and now there's a hole in his stomach. <laughs> Yeah, if it had been on the CW, it would have been like, I had to change the the setting from stun <laughs> to kill all the way to, and then Captain would be like, oh, yeah. like he's never heard of aphasia before. Right, yeah, no, let's let's be glad they didn't do that. <laughs> it's just there. What did you think of Kirk right before they transferred his memories and whatnot, realizing, oh shit, they're going to try to replace me? And then, yeah. to, and then getting himself angry and saying, mind your own business, Mr. Spock, I'm sick of your half-breed interference. Do you hear? Just so that version will say that yeah. and make Spock go, oh, you're not real. <laughs> this this is some fucked up shit. Yeah. No, that that was like, I, I immediately got it. And I was like, good instincts. Good instincts. I'm glad it worked out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the whole time, like from the minute he hears that guy fall, Kirk's like, oh, this is some bullshit. Yeah, you just yeah. killed my man. You killed that man. Yeah, <laughs> like he, they, they, they dead. They both dead. <laughs> that that shit. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, he's gone. I'm sorry. <laughs> I assure you, that, he has passed. not suspicious. Yeah. Uh, no, it is. It is the first time red shirts have just all been wiped out. Right. Like that's that's yeah. that's the start of the trope, basically. Yeah. This is the first episode where they killed the red shirts. Yeah. Other crewmen have died. Hooray. 
Oh, they absolutely. were wearing other color shirts. Yeah. Now but, it's just really, oh, I need a security unit to die. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? As I've mentioned, someone did do the math. And it seems oh, like yeah, proportionally, right. proportionally, you are much more likely to die if you were wearing uh, a gold or blue shirt. Because Intriguing. Um, yeah. enough of those people have died. And it just seems like most of the Enterprise crew is made up of red shirts. <laughs> 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 that's fair yeah it's like yeah. 400 red shirts and like 30 others <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really all you need yeah yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a military vessel Oof. <clears throat> uh yeah i like uh there's this episode is very basic in a lot of ways they don't sure. dig deep beneath the surface of any of this but i like you know the I like the the questions they kind of graze over, like, you know, eating is a pleasure. Unfortunately, one you will never know, perhaps, but I will never starve. And then you have Corby talking to Kirk. In android form, a human being can have practical immortality. Can you see what I'm offering mankind? Kirk says programming, different word, but the same old promises made by Genghis Khan, Julius Caesar, Hitler. And And Corby says, can you imagine how life could be improved if we could do away with jealousy, greed, and hate? And Kirk says it can also be improved by eliminating love, tenderness, sentiment, the other side of the coin. Uh, you know, very, very obvious sci-fi tropes. Absolutely. But at least they're there. They're, they're turning over some some of the stones. And I'm like, yeah, uh, this is at least some interesting ideas, some, some thoughts being provoked. And this is and one, including one that will be revisited in Star Trek time and time again, in some ways, uh, in, with their lead characters uh the the idea of is artificial life life yeah. and um you know one of the th- where great is that things, line you, you were talking about you know uh, having to have andrea kiss kirk and it is important shorthand because you know corby is 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 making a point like look there's no love here yeah. She's she's just here to please me. And she doesn't look, feel shit. She doesn't feel anything. Me. Look, she's gotta go kiss Captain Kirk. But when Kirk tries to kiss her, she like pushes him back and she's like, not programmed for you. Yeah. Like and it's, it's clearly like, Oh, oh, there's some consent issues. Yeah. There are consent issues and also like there's emotion there. Like she yeah. is confused and angry and hurt and feels like no, this I am for him. I'm for Corby, um, yeah. and his monogamy is programmed. It is not innate, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I love cultural yeah. that you know Rock had been like, well, it had been so long, and I couldn't remember. But yes, that was the equation: existence, survival must cancel out programming. Like they decided, no, we've got to kill. We've got to override yeah. our programming to survive. Um. Mm. And you, you have that notion, and Corby's just willing to be like, nope, I'm going to kill you then. If you don't listen to me, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. Like, did you? Did he have the right to kill Rock? Did he, uh, was he ever was Corby in the first? Lost? yeah. You know, clearly he had, emo- Corby had emotions for Christine, mm. or else he wouldn't have been fighting so hard. I mean, he's like, well, I transferred my whole consciousness. I'm still me. Yeah. No, you're not. You've You've changed at the very least over these past years. Yeah, but like those thoughts know. have evolved and a lot has changed. But then he has to like try and convince you, and the best he can do is, I can solve any equation. Yeah, that sounds human, baby. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I think it's interesting and strange that upon realizing that he has emotions and Andrea has emotions, he embraces her and kills the both of them. Yeah, it's like a murder suicide. Essentially, yeah. Like, man, I wanted to unpack that more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dark, dark. Um, like, I had to like rewind for a second where I was like, "Wait, who shot who? Like, what? What?" <laughs> yeah, no, he because killed it himself. Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he grabs her her weapon. Yeah, yeah. Which was, by the way, the phaser pistol used in the cage. Ah, that was a Starfleet phaser pistol from the cage or laser. <laughs> whatever they called it back then uh, sh- sure <laughs> well, same thing <laughs> um interestingly there is a scene at the end of this where uh chapel tells kirk I- i've made my decision i'm going to stay on board 
And mm-hmm. it kind of implies in this episode that she came aboard the Enterprise specifically to find Roger Corby. And yeah. uh, Major Barrett has talked about this, about how, like, according to this episode, which I don't know, like, exactly how, like, how, when they said all this, because I don't remember seeing it, but uh, Major Barrett claims that uh, Nurse Chapel took a redu- reduction in rank to become a nurse because she was an MD. Uh, mm. Later, later material seems to suggest that that's not true, but oh, okay. uh, according to her, at some point she said she took a a, redu- a reduction in rank to go find Roger Corby on the Enterprise, and then wound up deciding to stay as a nurse on the Enterprise. I mm-hmm. can't like you know. I don't think that really works out. I think she misunderstood it might have been something. An earlier concept, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because we've seen her before, and she was a nurse then, and she certainly wasn't trying to get to Roger Corby when she was telling Spock she loved him. So, nope. um, and also like those are two different professions. Yeah, like it might be a lower rank, but that doesn't mean any doctor can become a nurse. Right. They don't know what the fuck they're doing for that. Well, <laughs> like look, usually, I don't. I don't want to like step too hard into that territory because Fair that enough. to me rings different of, professions. It's different professions, but it's also like we're talking about like two hundred years in the future. And yeah, that's what I mean. Different professions yeah. uh, from what they are now. Yeah, yeah. right. And you know, it 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 feels to me like um like uh, a lot of people will who are in the military will get angry at star trek and be like that's not how rank works and i'm like this is in the future you don't know how rank works uh, 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 <laughs> fucking <laughs> go go on a hike like jesus um yeah like i don't care like is, 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 does it matter yeah like, we've already seen with the romulans their rank works differently yeah there is so, just a i i'm docking you two points type system where you know that, that that's a cultural thing and rank does rank seems to be to differ in star trek across series like of in course. the original series you will hear of a lot of commodores and you don't hear much about commodores in the 24th century stuff and there is everybody's no, an the commodore 64 was was replaced by then <laughs> yeah um You'll you hear a lot more about admirals, you know, but mm. you don't you don't hear about generals. You don't hear about and you know, uh, in right. the original yeah. series they tried to be really really loosey goosey with like what it, whether like Roddenberry was like oh, it's more like the Coast Guard. It's not really the military. But right, then right. by the movies, Roddenberry was ousted and Harv Bennett came in and he's like, nope, it's the Navy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> of course. So they, How like, could we have know, missed this? Yeah, so uh, there's a lot of back and forth on what, and you know, TNG is very different from a lot of the ranking traditions and stuff. So it's it's just kind of weird. It's it's another generation. The next, yeah, one. it's 88 years later. Whoa, <laughs> shit happens. Yeah. <clears throat> um. So I yeah. would hope any army isn't doing the same shit they were doing 90 years ago. Except for, you know, let's, let's not get into recent events. Mm-hmm. Uh. Yeah. Uh, by the way, um, in that Star Trek Insights, Sherry Jackson said that William Shatner's chest had to be shaved for his, <laughs> for his scenes in the Android machine. And uh. you can tell, like, whenever he's shirtless on the original series, he is shaved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because Roddenberry thought that Kirk wouldn't have chest hair. <laughs> no, no, he's far too evolved for or that body hair. <laughs> Apparently, it's, but it's weird that because like in the original, in like the first movie, mm-hmm. like you could just tell he's just covered in hair. Like his ah. his or he has more arm hair than he does on his actual head. Like if you get beneath <laughs> the toupee, you're like, oh my god! <laughs> like he is like Robin Williams in the motion picture, but <laughs> just like a walking rug of a man. But uh oh great. Yeah, he's he's very manscaped in the original series. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, according to Memory Alpha, the script for this episode was in such bad shape that Gene Roddenberry had to make revisions simultaneously with the with the filming of the episode and shooting had to wait until new pages arrived. Oh, and that boy. was that was actually from Star Trek the Real Story page 204. Mm-hmm. So if you want to go read that book, everyone, uh, I actually kind of do uh, like reading well, those books. Go, go ahead. We have time. Go go read it. 
No, I don't have it. Oh. I'd have to order it. Oh, that's going to take a bit. Yeah. Painful. Uh, do you have Definitely. anything else on this episode? Do you feel like there's any burning uh, issues? No, no. I think we've covered it. And some of those issues, like, that makes sense because at that point you improvise some action and, and another escape. And that's that's where you fill up some time with, let's let's have them run around the, the compound again. Mm-hmm. And that makes sense. But then when there is writing, I'm like, ooh, interesting. And then that's, that's, it, it is fun. It's a, it's a, it's a nice one. Yeah. I was uh, pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Once again. Yeah. Um, Not that my expectations were far lower or anything, but just, just in general, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. There's actually a sequel to this episode in book form <laughs> called Double of Double. Course. It was a novel mm-hmm. that was published and I, of course, have it, but. Um, it's like the, there was unbeknownst to anyone, to, to the crew, of the enterprise, mm-hmm. there was another Android and he was away on an expedition and he comes back to find everyone murdered and, <laughs> and decides yeah. to basically like make a duplicate, uh, an Android duplicate of the last person, uh, duplicated and it's Kirk. So he like ah. concocts a scheme to like steal the enterprise and get revenge for the yeah Funny. yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, cool yeah so that's around if you actually ever want to read that is they- yeah if I ever want to read a book <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh hey I want to write know, a book I don't want to read a book <laughs> from what I understand you know you can uh, you can already you can just purchase the book on like Kindle or whatever and like. Up or get a PDF or something and upload the file to an app that will just read it to you. That's like true. You can you can get at anything into audio form if you want to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's an option. Now, there's the, one one last burning thought. <laughs> I noticed on on Memory Alpha that the last quote where um, b- between uh, Spock and Kirk of the, of the like, oh, I was rather dismayed by your use of the term half breed, Captain. <laughs> like the, the unsophisticated expression, and then. I'll remember that the next time I find myself in a similar situation is blue. And I'm like, shit, there's a hyperlink. <laughs> this will be relevant. <laughs> but I don't want to spoil myself, so I don't wait, click it. But, it th- but there's another episode they're referring to. Let me see. I don't, yeah. I don't know what they're referring to. <laughs> oh, just, yeah, yeah, you go, you go look. <laughs> I have no idea what they're talking about. Let me see what they're talking about. I'll tell you if it's an actual spoiler or not, I guess. Like, similar situation. Oh. Mm. Loosely kind, used term. <laughs> kind of. Okay. Well, for those who know, uh, they're talking about... They, that that links to the page for the episode This Side of Paradise. Uh, we'll get yeah. there. Yeah, kind of, kind of, kind of. Hmm. Hmm. Curious. Yeah, I'm I, 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 like like that's a that it, it felt like a stretch because it is a quote. It's not a direct like reference to anything. So like to put that in the in the the wiki page is just ah oh, sure intriguing. Hmm. I think there's. I think it might be ref- referring to this quote in this side of paradise where Kirk. Y- is fighting Spock and or is provoking Spock and says, "You're uh, a, you're a traitor from a race of traitors, disloyal to the core, rotten like the rest of your subhuman race, and you've got the gall to make love to that girl." <laughs> okay, um, that sounds fucked. Looking forward to that episode. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, we'll we'll get there. I'm sure. Jesus. Uh, yeah, I forgot about that little that little moment. Yeah. I, I guess I guess he remembered that uh, that that would rile him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a good call. <laughs> <Like>. <laughs> someone someone put one and one together. Yeah, no, yeah. Oh, <clears throat> that's a good call. Uh anyway, let's see. Uh, oh, we've got some feedback. A little bit of feedback about the Ooh. episode Charlie X from Stu Little. Uh, ah, writing in. I know from, that name. Yeah. Yeah. Stewie writes, uh, Charlie handles things poorly, but I also find a lot of the regular cast behavior towards him pretty unlikable. Spot yeah. just has no tact with dealing with a young man who wants to learn to play the game or her, nope. thinks, 
Uhura thinks it's fine to just embarrass him in song in front of everyone. And yeah. Kirk, and Kirk has the 50s slash 60s attitude that the kid just needs some rough and tumble manly activities and goes out of his <laughs> way to emasculate him physically in the gym. <laughs> Yeah, because that has helped every single boy grow up to be just as emotionally repressed. It's fair. It's fair. Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, oof. Uh, Stu says... They they don't handle it well. (laughs) No, no, they don't. Rand's the only character I find sympathy uh, for because she's got this unwanted attention and tries to deal with it as compassionately as she can. Yeah. Yeah, she's lovely. Absolutely. Very nice about it. They everyone is sort of like a mocking dick to Charlie, and for mm-hmm. real, they're all like, hey, 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 "Stupid kid doesn't know this what's going kid. on." Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'll show they're not you, very kid. welcoming. I'll show you, kid. This is called a throw. Yeah, yeah. I just <laughs> threw you, threw you against the wall. You stupid little pansy. <laughs> You're a kid. Look at you all wet behind the ears. <laughs> you thought oh, you knew God. something. <laughs> yeah, fair. I mean, at the same time, it it also, like, Rand's very soft letdown of, like, I'm too old for you and don't want this and don't need this. Like, it, 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 she could have been clearer, but also it reeks of the, the standard, I have to be very careful with his male fragile ego to not, like, get him to lash out, which he does eventually anyway, but there is that, like... Knowing as a woman to be very fucking careful with this situation. Yeah, I mean, she tried. It's hard, man. She tried to foist him onto some other girl. Yeah, yeah, that was not subtle, but <laughs> yeah, I've you know it was what? an attempt. I've yeah. done that. I've done that. Or like I was introduced someone to another girl and been like, you can, yeah. you guys should make out. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> no, I introduced a girl that I was not romantically interested in, mm. who was really into me. I introduced her to my more attractive friend. <laughs> it was like trying to get that to be a thing. And oh boy, at, at some point in the middle of like us all hanging out, he just goes like. I don't know. She goes like, why are you trying to get me to date your friend? And I was like, son of a bitch. What are you talking Fuck. about? I have been, <laughs> I have been thwarted. Like, no, no, you, you don't understand. I mean, like if you wanted to, I would understand, of course, but no, you don't understand. I just thought you'd be good friends. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I would never. <laughs> She's like, just, you know. I look, I don't, I don't know which, why you're getting that. I mean, I would get it if you did want to date him, but... Because, yeah, like, look at him, but... <laughs> I'm like, also, he's in the military. He's got them benefits. Come on. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's healthcare, honey. <laughs> in this country? Woo-hoo. <laughs> yeah, it didn't go well. <laughs> no? Ah. I wish I could have seen that coming. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, that's going to do it for this round of original Trek. If you want to leave us feedback for these, feel free to write in to Star Trek Ucast at gmail.com or uh, like Stu Little did, we, we post these on YouTube and you can send us a, a comment on those as well. Uh, next week's F episode. Actually, we, that's, episode. That's, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, the episode. Oh. The episode. Because <laughs> Effie's on the episode. Next week's episode. Effie and I are reviewing Dagger of the Mind. <sighs> Until next time, Jolan True, live long and prosper, and of course, eat a dick. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Star Trek Universe Podcast, a Stranded Panda production. If you'd like to hear more from David C. Robertson, check out the DC On Screen Podcast or maladjusted.tv for his web videos. If you'd like to hear more from Matthew Carroll, check out the Marvel Cinematic Universe Podcast or listen to his music. Just search for Matthew Carroll anywhere you get music. 